I'm the only one who can bring stability to the TVA because that's what I've been doing for eons. When will you learn? That your actions have consequences! Loki Season 2, Episode 3. This one made me angry. I mean, it seriously ticked me off. I think we've reached the peak of delusional, nonsensical, contradictory characters forced to make idiotic decisions for the sake of a broken plot. In this episode, Loki and Mobius track Renslayer's Tempad to Chicago, 1893, on a branch timeline. And both groups fight over Victor Timely, a variant of Kang. Loki's back to his harmless, jokey self. It's such poverty of imagination. Is somebody feeling a little left out that they're not out there? No. Then why'd they include Boulder? No one's even heard of him. Boulder's not that tall. <laughs> Absolutely not. Except now he can teleport people. Add that to the list of new powers. And what do you know? There's a perfect scenario that demonstrates why these new abilities are an issue. Loki and Mobius want to take Timely with them, but Renslayer threatens to kill him. This would be the perfect opportunity for an almighty pull or a Kamui. Speaking of Timely... Time. It moves through each and every one of us. I can't understand your accent. His very existence is a plot hole, and the episode doesn't even try to explain it. In season 1, Kang explained he wiped out all the timelines but one, to prevent any variants of himself popping up. But Timely is a variant of Kang that exists on the sacred timeline, which means at step 1 of his grand plan, Kang completely failed. You had one job. Renslayer drops a TVA guidebook in the home of a young Timely. This enables him to become an amazing scientist capable of inventing a prototype loom and prototype time stick, among other miraculous inventions. And hey, kudos! They actually remembered that changing the past creates a branching timeline, so this is no longer the sacred timeline. Regardless, I'm not buying for a second that a man from the 19th century is capable of understanding the TVA guidebook, much less replicating any aspect of it. This would be so far outside his realm of understanding as to be completely alien, he has no business inventing even a janky loom, or so easily accepting the existence of an entity like Miss Minutes. Apparently, Kang had a plan to return himself to the top of the TVA should he die. Renslayer and Miss Minutes are trying to enact said plan, but it falls apart without explaining what it even is. Is the plan to literally plop this Kang variant in the TVA and make him the new He Who Remains? Because that's not gonna work. Like I said, there's no way a 19th century man could even begin to comprehend the TVA let alone fulfill the role of Master of Time and Space. Sylvie's in this episode, and nearly everything about her is a problem. She appears out of nowhere, as Loki and Renslayer are trying to grab Timely before the other. And her only explanation is... You let Sylvie track you here. Did it ever hurt you? Maybe she tracked you here? How did she track them? All she's got is a Tempad. The TVA needs more than that to track Renslayer. Maybe Kang's Tempad is just that good? But we have no reason to think so. Regardless, why would Sylvie decide to follow them now of all times? Is it because she learned the TVA is still around last episode? But she didn't give a shit at the time. And she knows their mission now is to maintain all the branching timelines, not destroy them. So she had no reason to follow them. Unless she knew they'd happen to run into a Kang variant? But she couldn't possibly know that. When Sylvie shows up, she's on her high horse. So high, in fact, she's suffocating from lack of oxygen. Just wait! Just wait for a second! You've done enough. Get out of my face and let me finish the job! Sylvie is determined to kill Timely. Loki finally explains that if the TVA's temporal loom is destroyed, that wipes out the multiverse. And this Kang variant is critical to saving it. This should get Sylvie to back down. She's got no rebuttal. If she kills Timely, she's dooming the multiverse, including the branch she now calls home. So what does she say in response? Stopping that place from being destroyed and fixing it are two very different things. And working with one of his variants is not going to get you either. What the hell is the difference between fixing it and stopping it from being destroyed? Explain yourself, woman. Make it make sense. And were you even listening? Loki just explained that Timely is necessary to stop the loom from exploding. Sounds to me like Sylvie realizes she's in the wrong, but rather than admit it, she does all kinds of mental gymnastics to justify her nonsensical actions. If you and the TVA hadn't messed with him, he'd have remained harmless. But instead, you weaponized him. And Slayer set him on a path that he wasn't meant for. And now you are waltzing him straight back into the TVA. The most dangerous man who ever lived! Chill, bitch. Despite all the information on the TVA he's been given, Timely is still just a normal dude, limited by his understanding of 19th century science. 
he shouldn't be able to do much of anything. He's also constrained by the morality of his time, so I doubt he'll immediately start genociding universes the first chance he gets. The TVA needs him. The lives they protect need him. You haven't got a clue, have you? Yeah, real nice comeback, Sylvie. How about coming up with something coherent next time? Last episode, Sylvie was pretty nonchalant about the idea of Kang's variants popping up. He shows up again. His variants, what are you gonna do? Kill him. But now that one has shown up, she immediately loses her goddamn oh, mind. Guess she was bullshitting before to maintain her pompous persona. Except, instead of admitting she was wrong, she pins all the blame on Loki. And then, during the fight for Timely, Sylvie and Loki blast one another, giving Renslayer the chance she needs to snag him. This is on you. Shut the hell up. Sylvie swoops in, interrupts their mission, completely fucks the situation, and then has the gall to blame it all on Loki. The capacity of this bitch. <laughs> At the end of the episode, she corners Renslayer, the person who ruined her life. Instead of killing her, like she explicitly wants to, she sends her to the end of time, because she's a stupid person. Sylvie doesn't know what kind of tech Kang has stored there. She was able to get a super special tempad just by grabbing what was on his desk. Remember, Kang intended for Loki and Sylvie to rule the TVA, and therefore the multiverse, from that location. And she's now given the person she hates most access to all of it. That's so great. Fuck. There's only one Sylvie moment in this episode that kind of works. When she's about to kill Timely, he says, I haven't done anything. No, oh, you will. You'll do terrible things. That, that isn't me. You, you don't know me. I can make my own choices. This convinces her to let go. Sylvie has placed a great deal of importance on free will and allowing people to write their own futures. So when this variant Kang claims he's his own person and he has a right to make his own choices, Sylvie lets him go. Because she believes in that freedom more than anything. And she's not about to steal said freedom from someone else, even a variant Kang. Overall, Sylvie is absolutely awful, save for one moment that builds on her character in a coherent way. On the other hand, I can't say Rensselaer even has one saving grace. She's as confused a character as ever. You're the one who sided with a Loki over me. Prune him. The problem with you is, you're completely delusional. Just about everything out of her mouth is utter drivel. Seriously, I don't know what reality she thinks she's living in. Mobius. You really are unbelievable. After all those years of doing your dirty work, cleaning up your messes, making the hard decisions you never had the nerve to make. What are you talking about? Mobius is just one analyst of many. She makes him sound like a crime boss. He worked for her, remember? If anything, he was carrying out her dirty work, not understanding he was living a lie. Did you happen to notice? The second I left, everything crumbled. I'm the only one who can bring stability to the TVA because that's what I've been doing for eons. What are you talking about? Come on, Renslayer. You're supposed to have at least a few brain cells to rub together. Can't you think of any reason why the TVA might be having a hard time right now? Could it be, perhaps, the fact that their entire objective as an organization has abruptly changed? Rather than prune any and all branches that appear, they're trying to protect the virtually infinite amount of branches sprouting into existence, which is an exceptionally more difficult job. I don't think losing one judge is as crippling to the TVA as she thinks. So rather than clear up the contradictions in Renslayer's character, the show has doubled down on them, sprinkling in some more for good measure. I'm still holding out hope that whatever big secret Kang kept from Renslayer will help mitigate this disaster of a character. Let's talk the episode's climax. It relies on absolute, bottom-of-the-barrel lazy writing to set it up. The show is filled with coincidence and unexplained convenience, but here it's more blatant than ever. Let me explain. Before leaving with Renslayer, Timely wants to grab an invention from his lab. Instead of just portaling there, they take a boat. Why? We could just take a time door. Are you crazy? They'll track us. But if they portaled in and out, the TVA wouldn't have time to intercept them. It won't matter if we go straight to the TVA. It takes time for them to detect time doors. Remember, Sylvie totally blindsided them. Along the boat ride, despite hitting it off, Timely betrays Renslayer, dropping her into the lake. If only she hadn't used his no-no word. I had high hopes for this partnership. <laughs> you heard her, Victor. Partnership. It's set up earlier that Timely's an egotistical man. He's not prepared to share the glory. 
I was thinking more along the lines of a partnership. You give me the patent rights, I'll facilitate production. I don't do partners. Excuse me. Thank you for coming. Except the context isn't remotely the same. Owning the patent for a revolutionary technology is one thing. Being a master of time and space is another. He can't possibly understand what that entails, which means he's making a lot of assumptions when he betrays Renslayer. Then when Timely and Miss Minutes get to his lab, she recommends laying low for a while, which is dumb. They didn't kill Renslayer, so she's obviously going to follow them to the lab. Plus Loki, Mobius, and Sylvie are still looking for them. Now is the time to get out of Dodge. As they lay low, Miss Minutes goes full Yandere, creeping out Timely so much she puts her back in the tempad. You can just do that? A being as powerful as Miss Minutes could be stopped just like that? Miss Minutes, what about it? She has administrative access to the entire she TVA. Access to the whole universe. This adds Miss Minutes to his growing list of enemies. It was foolish of him to make an enemy out of someone who knows all his secrets. And puts her out of commission when Renslayer predictably shows up to threaten him. And conveniently, Loki and Mobius arrive immediately after. How did they find this place so quickly? I don't know. Renslayer takes Timely hostage, putting them all in a stalemate. A stalemate prolonged by Loki conveniently forgetting he has telekinesis and teleportation powers. Then, conveniently, Sylvie shows up to upturn the situation. How did she find this place so quickly? I don't know that either. So as you can see, a string of absurd events are required to make this climax possible. Characters make idiotic decisions and appear wherever the plot needs them regardless of all logic. The writers know where they want the story to go but they're at a loss of how to organically get there. And given how simplistic the plot of this episode is, that's kind of sad. Now you know why this episode ticked me off. It's particularly bad at handling its characters and had to tie itself in knots just to set up a simple climax. Basically, it sucks my ass. Thanks for watching, consider leaving a like. Till next time.